How do you, as an intermediate guitarist, improve your rhythm and stop sounding like an amateur guitarist? Well, stay tuned to this video and find out. Hey, I'm Daniel Seraph, and on this channel, every week, I'm taking all the things I've learned as a professional guitarist and teacher over the last 15 years and teaching you all the things that you need to improve as an intermediate guitarist. So if you're new here, I want to make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. So today, we're going to cover some rhythm. So let's go ahead and jump into this lesson. All right, so one thing that I've learned over my time as a guitar teacher is that guitarists by nature are not connected to rhythm, and especially not when they're playing single notes, scales, guitar solos, right? Historically, what it seems like is that people, uh, when they play some like rhythm, you know, like chords, they're a little bit more connected to the rhythm, but when they go into single note playing, it seems like it becomes arrhythmic. There's a lot of kind of like noodling around and people kind of lose touch. Now also, uh, when I teach students, a lot of times one of the things that I notice about them is when they go to jam with people or play with other people, they kind of lose touch because they've practiced alone for too much too long. They haven't used a metronome, they haven't used a drum machine, they haven't played along to music enough, and they surely haven't counted rhythm out loud. And that's what we're gonna do here. So, I'm gonna just present a couple of simple topics that will help you immensely, especially if you do them a little bit every day. The first one is incredibly simple, but it might surprise you. And that is, I want you to start counting out loud. Now, I learned about this from Adam Neely, the great YouTuber, and uh, he got me counting out loud when I practice, and not only that, but when I listen to music. So objective number one, I want you to count out loud when you're listening to music. You know, if you're in the car, if you're in the shower, if you're just hanging out around the house, I want you to listen to, you know, whatever great music that you love that excites you, and I want you to count out loud. And so for the most part, our music is in 4-4 four, four time, which means we're gonna count one, two, three, four, that's right, one, two, three, four. And what this boils down to typically is going to be the pulse of the song, right? Or the heartbeat, okay? And so like, you know, certain songs um, might be faster, they might be slower, right? But the idea here is that it doesn't matter. I just want you to count out loud. So if the song's grooving, <laughs> listening to it, you know, on your radio, I want you to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, most people can feel that pulse. If you have a problem feeling the pulse and kind of the essential ingredient of the rhythm, one thing to lock into, the kick drum and the snare drum. Kick drum happens on typically beats one and three. The snare drum happens on beats two and four. It sounds like this. Okay, so while you hear that drum beat, I want you to count out loud, and whenever you're listening to music, I want you to count out loud. So step number two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start to play the guitar and do it. And it doesn't have to be complex. All I want you to do at first is just strum quarter notes. Right? Quarter notes are that essential pulse. It's that one, two, three, and four. Those are quarter notes, okay? And so when we're listening to that music, I want you to strum along and go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is also a great activity where if that were too complex for you, you could do it to just a metronome or just a drum machine. But all I want you to do is one, two, three, four, one, two, 
three, four. It is amazing the improvement that I've seen in my students when they practice counting and playing quarter notes with all downstrokes is super helpful, okay? So that's exercise number two. And we're gonna go ahead and do one more. We're gonna do exercise number three. We're going to introduce eighth notes. Okay, so eighth notes are half as long, or you could say doubly as fast as quarter notes. Okay, so if you were to count these eighth notes, you'd say one and two and three and four and. Okay, they sound like this, typically on the drum set, hi-hats. Okay, so now that you hear how those hi-hats sound, that's commonly you know, played on the drum set, what I want you to do is I want you to strum and count out loud. One and, two and, three and, four and. And we're gonna play downstrokes on the beat, meaning the one, two, three, and four. And we're gonna play upstrokes off the beat, the ands. It'll sound like this. One and, two and, three and, four and. One and, two and, three and, four and. One and, two and, three and, four and. You got it? Okay, so again, I want you to do that with your metronome or I want you to do that with a drum machine or your favorite track, right? And sometimes songs might be more like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and. They start to get pretty fast. So maybe you wanna look for kind of a slower song at first to kind of get comfortable with this. But I promise that if you do this along to music, along to the metronome, along to a drum machine, any of those things, that all of a sudden you're counting out loud and your comfort is gonna make you so much more rhythmically centered and in tune with rhythm to where when you go and try and jam with people or you try and just play along to a song, it's gonna help you immensely. Okay, that's it for today. I just wanted to give you these three simple, straightforward exercises that you could start working on because it's amazing how much this will change your playing. So, you know, if you're already a person who's been working on your rhythm, maybe you could leave me a comment down below and let me know kind of how you like to work on your rhythm. I'm always interested in learning like what has worked for people. And uh, I'd love to hear from you if, uh, you know, this exercise seems to be working after a few days, a couple weeks, you know, a month, you start to feel more connected to your rhythm. Okay, awesome. Thanks for watching this video. Take care. Have a great day.